you know, if I'm doing an event, you know, somewhere, like I was in Los Angeles a little ways back and I'm getting ready to do an event in an audience like this, a little, little bigger than this, and I'm setting up my computer, you know, and I'm getting ready to start and all of a sudden here comes this lady like marching down the aisle like, how come I'm not living in Santa Fe, New Mexico? And I say, because the personality who's living in Santa Fe, New Mexico looks nothing like that. <laughs> I'm your host, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Let's begin. There's not a lot of room for the unknown to show up if you're doing the same thing as you did the day before. Would you agree? Because we would say then, as you see the same people that you have a past experience with, and you go to the same place in anticipation of the same event that creates the same emotion, that when you walk into your present past reality, it's the external environment that's causing your brain to turn on. As you see the same people and you do the same things at the exact same time, it's the external environment that's activating different circuits in your brain to cause you to think equal to everything that you know. You know, you have a few thoughts about your coworker, you have a few thoughts about the, the lady at the coffee shop, you know, your your external environment is causing you to think equal to it. And as long as you're th thinking equal to your external environment, you keep reaffirming the same personal reality. If your brain is a record of the past, r r realize this, right? Your brain presently, right now, is pretty much an encoded series of knowledge and experience that's led you up to this present moment. Would you agree? Poke the person next to you. So then, if it's a record of the past, and you're responding and reacting to your environment the same way, and the people and conditions and the places are automatically, through your senses, turning on the same circuits to produce the same level of mind every day, then it's your external environment that's reminding you of who you think you are. How many people understand that? And if it's hardwired in there, you're doing it unconsciously. And it's those thoughts that are creating the same life. And so you're thinking the same way, you're acting the same way, and you're feeling the same way, and you're wondering why God hasn't answered your prayers. <laughs> so then, if your brain is a record of the past and the hardware in there is a software program, it's become a software program, then the moment you turn the program on, you're thinking in the past. How many people are with me? And because you're turning on the same circuits that are connected to your past, you're not thinking in any new ways to be able to overcome the conditions in your environment. How many people are with me? So then, we get frustrated, we get impatient, we start trying to force outcomes, we get competitive, we get greedy because, the, because we don't know how to get outside of that box because the brain is firing in the same sequences, the same patterns and the same combinations every day and it begins to hardwire into a very finite signature. And that finite signature is called your identity. That's the box of the brain. And by the time you're 35 years old, it's a limited set of resources. How many people are with me? Yeah. So then, if you're not creating then, if you're not beginning to envision possibility, and you're not learning and beginning to speculate new outcomes, you're not making your brain work in any new ways. But if you're learning information and you're reading about greatness and you're understanding the quantum model of reality and you're looking at yourself and you're reviewing it over and over again, you're adding new networks of neurons that become the raw materials for you to think in new ways. How many people are with me? And as you begin to think in new ways, you begin to fire and wire new circuits and those new circuits become the very platform of your identity, of your future. Now your brain's no longer in the past. It's in the future because you've got new circuits that you can use that you'll keep activating and growing your brain to look like the event has occurred. How many people are with me? So then, if feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences and you're living by the same emotions every single day, then we said last night, nothing new is happening in your life. And if your emotions are driving the same thoughts, 
<laughs> and then those thoughts drive the same emotions, and those emotions drive the same thoughts, and emotions are the record of the past, and you're thinking equal to how you feel, and feelings have become the means of thinking, then you're thinking in the past. How many people are with me? Yes. And nothing new should happen. Would you agree? And if you keep that cycle of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking going on, I don't know, I'll be conservative, 33 and a third years. <laughs> and it becomes so familiar to you that you don't even know, like if you didn't feel guilt, you wouldn't know how to feel. Because it just feels right, it feels familiar. And the body begins to become the mind of guilt. It becomes a subconscious computer program. And once the body has memorized guilt better than the conscious mind now, the body is running the mind. And if that's 95% of who you are, then to change is to be greater than your body. Because the body has been conditioned chemically to be the mind of guilt or the mind of shame or the mind of lack or the mind of unworthiness because it has enough experiences. How many people are with me? So then the moment you start denying the body its chemical addictions. You're not complaining. You're not blaming. You're not making excuses. You're not feeling sorry for yourself. You're not talking about anybody else. You stop that. The body's going, whoa, just a little bit. Come on. I got a lot of receptor sites for this suffering thing, man. Come on. And the body's sending signals back to the brain. Come on, do it, do it, do it, do it, right? And that's the body-mind. How many people understand? And so then, now you're in the river of change. So then, if you're living by the same emotion every day, then your body as the unconscious mind is believing it's in the same past experience 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The body's believing it's in the same event all day long. How many people are with me? And because there's no new experiences that create any new emotions that are new chemical signatures from the environment, you're not signaling any new genes in any new ways, and now you're headed for your genetic destiny. How many people are still with me? Ah, some lights are going on. So now, if you're living by the same emotions every single day, and your body is believing it's in the same past experience, and you condition your body to be the mind of that emotion, then your body literally is stuck in the past. And you can't create a new future holding on to the emotions of the past. How many people understand? So then now, this is all theoretical, it's all philosophical, and we can sit around and go, yeah, 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 that's great. <laughs> but some of you will leave this event and do nothing. And some of you will step into that river of change and you'll watch your body. You know, I have 20 horses and seven stallions, and I understand that the body is the animal. And I don't ride my horses at all in the winter in the Pacific Northwest. It's rainy. I don't want to ride horses then. It's cold. But in the summer, you know, I come home, I take the month of August on, I see my stallion, I jump on him. And what do you think he's going to say the moment I jump on him? <laughs> Where you been for the last year? I got a lot of habits going on. I'm doing my own thing here. <laughs> There's some really hot mares up on the other side of the property. I can smell them. Now, he's my body, right? He's totally bonded to me. He's my body. I get on the horse. What do you think he does the moment I get on him? He runs me into the wall of the arena. He tries to run me into the wall. This is my body. So when I'm on that horse and I notice his ear just turn a little bit and his eye head in that direction, I grab those reins and I pull him in. And I make him stand there. And I wait. And all of a sudden, whoosh, he lets his big snort out. And I know I got him. <laughs> and then we take another step, and he starts in a little bit, and I stop him again. And I recondition him to my mind. And I do this over and over again. And sooner or later, he surrenders. And the moment he surrenders, the horse and the rider are one. The mind and the body are working together. So don't you know when you step into that river of change, your body is going to be like that unbridled stallion. It's going to get impatient. It's going to get frustrated. It's going to doubt. Why, though? Did someone do that to you? 
or did you just mismanage your emotional body? It's you that did that. Would you agree? And you may tell me it's your ex-husband or it's your boss or whatever. No. It's your emotional reactions that you kept in check to reaffirm the reason why you haven't changed because you believed in that emotion more than possibility. You with me? Yes. So then when that, when that animal starts to buck and kick and it starts to get impatient and frustrated and every time you notice it doing that, you settle it back down into the present moment, you're doing exactly what I do with my stallion. You're reconditioning the body to a new mind. And the more you do it, the more it trusts you. And so when you're sick or you're diseased or you're, you're out of balance, you can sit down with that body and it'll work with you instead of against you. How many people understand? Now, I am not telling you this as some inspirational speech. I'm telling you this because I've seen it on brain scan after brain scan after brain scan. I have seen people in a state of frustration and impatience, their brain move into the wrong brainwave pattern, and they get out of balance, and all of a sudden, they turn it around. And the brain gets highly organized, gets very coherent, moves into different states, and they're overcoming themselves. And you know, I look around, I look at their face, and what do you think they're doing? They're freeing the body. They're freeing their own body from the chains of the past. The body is no longer tormented because it's no longer believing. It's living in the same conditions of the past. How many people are with me? And that is greatness. That is the people that I want to hang out with because those are the ones that still believe in possibility even when their body is raging. And there isn't a person in this audience isn't, doesn't have that level of commitment to do it. And finally, when the body liberates that energy and you are freed from the past, you will see possibilities you have never seen before because you're no longer looking at your life through the lens of the past. So then, one of the things that I learned over the last 10 years about myself is that the quantum model of reality says that thoughts have an effect on your life, yes? When I stop believing in that, I've traded that concept for some emotional addiction. Did you hear me? Yeah. You know, because my life got in the way or there's problems with staff or, you know, I'm too busy or I'm too tired or whatever. I, I, I trade that concept for some emotion that keeps me mediocre. Would you agree? And so all of a sudden, the moment you get caught up in that emotion, you're, you can't see possibility. Tell me why. Because emotions are the past. You can't see the future because you're emotionally looking, trying to see the future through the lens of the past. You know, if I'm doing an event, you know, somewhere, like I was in Los Angeles a little ways back, and I'm getting ready to do an event in an audience, like this, a little, little bigger than this, and I'm setting up my computer, you know, and I'm getting ready to start, and all of a sudden, here comes this lady, like, marching down the aisle, like, how come I'm not living in Santa Fe, New Mexico? And I say, because the personality who's living in Santa Fe, New Mexico looks nothing like that. 